In this short video, we're going to look at an example of form relating to function in biology using countercurrent gas exchange in fish gills. So, we know that fish use gills to extract oxygen from the water and to release their carbon dioxide. When we look here at this picture, we can see someone lifting up the operculum of a bony fish. We can see this gill arch with these bright red gills on there. And these gills are so red because there's lots of blood vessels running through them. And these highly folded, very thin membranes make for a very good gas exchange surface. So what we're going to need to do is have a little x-ray vision to look inside of our fish here to see the four bony gill arches that we see right here. And those gill arches are supporting this very highly folded thin membrane of the gills, which I'm representing by these red squiggly lines here. And so we have an opportunity to design or look at the design of how the fish gills work. Water enters into the fish's mouth, moves across the gills, and exits the back of the operculum. And as the water goes through, oxygen is extracted from the water. So I'm going to put some numbers to this just to make it a little easier to understand. I think it really helps. And I've picked the numbers kind of arbitrarily, but it'll make the point. So imagine that the water coming into the fish's mouth has 100 parts per million of oxygen. By the time it reaches the end of the gills, it's down to, let's say, 80. So we've extracted 20 parts per million of oxygen out of the water diffused into the blood. And now I'm going to let you be the bioengineer. You have the option, A, to send the blood into the gills from the front. So we could come in and go through here from the front and exit the back. Or you could have the option of coming from the back. Option B, sending the blood through the gills this direction and out the front. So the question is, which would you choose? Now stop the video and think about which would be the better option. The problem with this is, you know the name of this video. If you were in my class and I were teaching this, I wouldn't talk about countercurrent till the very end. So knowing the answer is one thing, but understanding it's a whole other thing. So let's look at the why. So let's isolate this system from our fish, move the fish out of the way, and zoom in and, a little, and get a little closer. Now one of the things we have to know is that gases tend to move down their concentration gradient. So if we bring our blood in this direction, choice A, and the blood's gone throughout the whole body, so by the time it reaches the gills, it's fairly oxygen poor. So I'm going to pick the number 60, 60 parts per million. So as the blood and the water meet each other, there's a favorable gradient which allows the water or the oxygen to move and diffuse out of the water into the blood. But by the time we get to the end and we've picked up 20 from the water, the blood is at 80 and the water is at 80. So our, our um, difference between the two, we could reach an equilibrium. Now I did pick these numbers at random and I could have just as easily, or, or arbitrary, not at random, uh, I could have just as easily made this number 50 and then by the time we gain 20 we'd be at 70 and we'd still have a favorable exchange rate from the 80 to the 70 but we certainly would have a much uh, less steep gradient and we reduce our rate of exchange. So let's turn the system around and bring the blood in from the back of the gills and have it run countercurrent to the water. So again the blood's coming in we chose 60 for the blood coming into the the gills and we have a favorable exchange gradient between the 80 and the 60 our most oxygen poor blood is meeting our most oxygen poor water but the water still has more oxygen than blood and by the time we get to the end our most oxygen rich blood is meeting the freshest water to ensure a favorable gradient throughout this entire system this countercurrent exchange gradient or exchange uh, flow maintains the most favorable gradients for gas exchange so we can put the system back into our fish and we see that the countercurrent, the blood flowing from the back of the gills towards the front and the water flowing from the front towards the back is going to give us the most favorable exchange gradient. And this is a very good example of form relating to function in a biological system. There are many others. For example, when we look at the heat exchanges in the arteries and the veins and also water conservation in the loop of Henle. So these are things that will come up uh, pretty frequently in biology. Alright, so if you have any questions, uh, watch the video again. Uh, leave me questions in the comment sections below, and I hope that you learned something.